Hello, folks. Welcome back to MPD Community Updates. I'm Community Service Officer Robert Kelleher. Glad to be here. And today's topic is going to be about school opening and safety. Many safety concerns when we talk about school opening, um, not only for the school, but for the general public. So we're going to talk about some of the concerns uh, for both. Um, not only you, but anybody who's involved in, in the school or, or bus transportation. So I want to talk a little bit about the bus procedures and, and the you know bus uh, concerns that we have. Um, obviously the main concern is speed. If well, let's talk about first of all, school opening is September 6th. So everybody write that down. September 6th. It's a Tuesday. Okay? The Merrimack School District is open. September 6th. Um, I don't want anybody confused or not knowing when school is opening um, because a lot of times those are the you know, the complaints we hear, oh, we didn't know that school was opening and we're running late. Um, so, please. And you can do yourself a little favor by being prepared. So, you know school's opening on September? Yes, 6th. So, if you know your route to work is going to be, you know, one of the bus routes, please either leave early or leave a little bit later. But, you know, the bus can't change the, the times of the routes for school opening, so unfortunately, it's up to you to change your schedule if you don't want to be stuck behind a school bus. So, with that said, please, you know, use due caution for, you know, especially this time of year, kids are going to be, you know, walking to school. They're going to be riding their bikes. They might be rollerblading or on skateboards. And the main concern is during the hours of the school opening is we have a, on our major route, Babustic Lake Road, which enters, you know, the high school and J. Muse area and MES. There's a lot of sun glare normally in, in the morning, and it's always facing the, the oncoming traffic. So please know where your school crossing guards are going to be. We always have one on Babusik Lake Road at O'Gara Drive. So when you come over the hill by the Legion, there's always going to be a school crossing guard there. And again, like I said, the sun glare is pretty dangerous right there. So please, there's signs posted he's going to be there. You know, you need to slow down. Everybody should know by now what the posted speed limit is in a school zone, right? I know you all said 20 miles an hour. You're all correct. So you passed the test. So please, 20 miles an hour, and, you know, that's in ideal conditions. And, you know, this is New England, New Hampshire, right? We're going to be, unfortunately, getting snow and, you know, uh, even rain and, and all that. Well, we haven't had much rain, so I'm sure that's coming too. But please, tw it's 20 miles an hour. That's on, like, perfect conditions. But when the conditions aren't perfect, you know, you might have to slow down to 10 miles an hour to make it safe, okay? So please be reasonable. Um, you know, the main goal is get the kids to school, get them there safely, keep the traffic flowing smoothly. Um, nobody wants to make you late for work. So if we, you know, help each other out, will make everything run smooth. That's that's the whole idea. And 
So please, and that includes in your neighborhoods. You know you're going to have kids from every grade level in your neighborhood. And, you know, the bus pickup times might be a little different for the younger kids versus, you know, the older kids. So please, you do caution. It's up to you as an adult. You must use due caution around, you know, children. So, you know, even though the posted speed might be 30 miles an hour in your neighborhood, if you know there's bus stops or there's kids, you know, going to school during that time, 30 miles an hour is not going to be reasonable if, you know, one of the kids runs out in front of you, you know, chasing a ball or, you know, just not paying attention, okay? So, again, save everybody a lot of headaches and mainly, you know, the safety of children. Just slow down, okay? And if you want to avoid all that, you know, maybe leave for work, you know, earlier, and, you know, stop for a coffee or something. Um, but you should make plans ahead of time to, you know, give yourself a little leeway, especially with the bad weather, you know, in order, if it takes you half hour to get to work, you know it's going to take you probably 40 minutes. So give yourself a little leeway so you're not rushing. So with that said, I'll talk a little bit about the fines. Because unfortunately, I know it's a fast-paced world. People don't listen to my show and my warnings. They don't give themselves time. And I know some things, you know, happen and people run late. But me personally, I'd rather see you be late for work than me having to stop you and, you know, writing a ticket because it's not good for anybody, okay? So the fine for speeding in a school zone, it's going to cost you over $90. It's $89 plus penalty assessment, okay? So you're talking probably, you know, $95, $98 for a ticket in a school zone. And we all know the school zone runs 45 minutes prior to school opening, and it runs 45 minutes after school opens, okay? So when those lights are flashing, right, and you don't see any kids maybe, it's still 20 miles an hour in that school zone, okay? And I can tell you from 20 to 30 miles an hour, you're not going to get anywhere any faster because you're going to get stopped at the Babusik Lake, Daniel Webster Highway traffic lights anyways, or another set of lights, okay? So please help us out, uh, and I can tell you we're going to be out enforcing the, you know, the speeds and all the school zones. Um, you can guarantee uh, that we're going to be out there, okay? So just a little helpful reminder for you folks to, you know, be cautious and, you know, obey the speed limits. Um, so let's talk about, we talked about the speed in the neighborhoods, right? And the, you know, the concerns that we have and, you know, the, the concerns of parents. Um, you know, we have some, some crossings. I'll talk about Babusik Lake Road right at Indian Rock, okay? We have, you know, there's not a lot of sidewalks, and the sidewalks on Babusik Lake Road, if you're coming towards the school from the, uh, the north or the, the west, it's on the left-hand side. So then the kids have to cross at Indian Rock and cross over at the crosswalk in order to go over the bridge because the sidewalk on the bridge is on the opposite side, okay? So please know that's where the crosswalk is, and I understand there's, there's a lot of glare, but if there's pedestrians at that crosswalk, 
By law, you have to stop for them. Okay? So even if they're approaching, you know, pre be prepared to stop. Um, it's a dangerous intersection right there. You know, the, the line of sight, um, you know, people coming around the corner heading the other way, you know, they tend not to, you know, look that far ahead. But please, you know there's a crosswalk there and you know there's going to be kids crossing there, you know, during the school hours. So be prepared to stop there. And so now we're going to talk about bus stops. There's many bus stops. Sometimes you don't agree with where they are. Um, you know, you might say, well, why don't these kids walk a little further and make, you know, one bus stop and, you know, not two? All I can tell you is if you have any complaints about bus stops or bus issues, um, Richard Desmond, he's the bus coordinator for the, the school district, and his number is 424 six two one zero and he will be able to answer any questions you have on you know bus issues or bus stops or anything like that so get a pen real quick I'll tell you again the phone number is four two four six two one zero and that's Richard Desmond okay so again you know, bus stops are there for the safety of the children, for the school bus driver. Um, you know, what's the law? Here's another test question. How many feet do you have to stop prior to a school bus stop? Let's see. 25. You're right. I knew everybody knew that. The law is 25 feet prior to the school bus stop okay so when you see those yellow lights flashing that means the bus is going to be coming to a stop okay so you must prepare yourself to stop okay just like a traffic light it goes yellow as the warning hey we're stopping red right we're stopped so you got to be prepared you got to be stopped 25 feet prior to that bus stop before it stops okay and I can tell you it's not up to the bus driver to decide oh well you're too close right I can't put my red lights on okay please if you've never been a bus driver you probably never want to be a bus driver because they have a lot of responsibility okay and they can't wait for the public to you know decide when they're going to stop when they get to that they put their yellows on you should already be stopping even if you have to wait you know a few more seconds longer please take the initiative and stop you know the bus stop is coming you got to be 25 feet prior to the bus stopping so just help the bus driver out he has enough concerns watching all the kids and you know making sure everybody's safe and you know loading and unloading um, you know there's major concerns there so please help out your fellow bus drivers okay I know I know for a fact they would really appreciate it okay um, so let's talk about uh, how about knowing some of the laws of school buses we talked about the 25 foot rule or law um, do you know if it's not divided, if, if the roadway is not divided, you must stop for school buses. So I'll give you a couple of examples we run into issues with. Daniel Webster Highway, okay, it's kind of a main, main issue we have at the Residence Inn which are now all apartments. So there will be 
kids getting on at the residence inn and any of those hotels, and there's a couple houses on Daniel Webster Highway, um, all the way down to the National Line, okay? There'll be kids, there'll be bus stops. Daniel Webster Highway is not divided. The only div divided part of Daniel Webster Highway is in front of Anheuser-Busch, which there's no bus stops there anyways. But all the other bus stops, both sides of traffic must stop, okay? So we run into that all the time. Well, I didn't think I had to stop because it's, it's a four-lane road. It, it doesn't matter. If it's not divided, you must stop, okay? And again, you can help out the bus driver. If you stop, everybody else is going to stop. So please, again, you don't want to get a ticket for running a school bus red lights. I'll tell you what that fine is. First offense is $125 plus penalty assessment. Okay? And the second offense is $250 plus penalty assessment. And you could lose your license up to 30 days. Okay? That's just for passing a school bus. Okay? On the, on the left. Now let's talk about if you pass a school bus on the right where they load and unload, first offense is $500 up to $1,000. And it's a loss of license for 30 days. Okay? So please, which, you know, we know is extremely dangerous. Okay? But even passing the bus, you know, in an unrestricted area, you know, on the left, okay, you, you don't want to run that risk. And, and if you want to, you know, read the law, um, you know, the, the statute, it's, it's uh, 265 colon 54, and it's Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 5. Okay, you can read it for yourself. It's very specific and clear that the school bus driver, if he files a complaint, that's all we need to issue the citation. Okay? So again, I know every bus driver, I'm talking for every bus driver, they want traffic just to obey their traffic lights know when to stop. It just makes their job so much easier and safer for not only him, but for all the children. And so let's talk about um, just any suspicious people in, in your neighborhoods, right? If you see somebody suspicious, you know, around school time or whatever, give us a call. Please, what, you know, we want to come out and we want to identify, you know, these people. You know, never know. So it's always to be, you know, overcautious than not report something, okay? Because the safety of the kids is, you know, the utmost concern. Um, so crossing guards. I want to talk about crossing guards. RSA 265-3-A, failure to obey school crossing guards, the fine is $124 plus penalty assessment, okay? So if that school crossing guard tells you to stop, you must stop. You can't go by them. They're just like a police officer, Okay? They're going to call us, and they're going to tell us that they told you to stop, and you continued past them, and you're going to get issued a, a citation, a ticket, okay? Again, you know, these are nice folks. They're, you know, helping the bus drivers, the children, the school staff, the public motorists, 
right? They're just doing their job. So if they tell you to stop, you know, by all means, stop, okay? Um, they're not trying to make you late for work, right? They just didn't pick you out of the crowd, okay? They're, they're serving a duty, and by you stopping, it just expedites everything, okay? And it makes everything safe, okay? So please, and that goes for the crossing guard on Amherst Road at Turkey Hill. You know, when she tells you to stop, you know, you might not want to stop, but you have to, okay? If you don't, you, you're going to get a ticket, okay? Um, let's talk about some phone numbers. If you, you know, be prepared. If you have any concerns or, you know, if you have a, a child at, you know, Thornton's Ferry, Make sure you know the proper phone numbers and people to talk to um, so you can expedite your concerns or your complaints or, or whatever. Um, you can go right online and check you know, the school website and you can get all that information handy. Um, so I just want to thank you all for taking the time. September 6th, school opens, right? Prepare your route. Um, distracted driving, okay? Please, this is no time to be a distracted driver. When we're talking about, you know, small children's, you know, life at stake here, please, you know, be the, the adult and don't be distracted. Don't be eating your breakfast on the way. Don't be putting your makeup on. Don't be on your cell phone. None of that. Make sure your windows are clear when we talk about, you know, winter time and stuff. You know, you, you can't look out your, your window like I'm looking at you, okay? That's against the law. Your whole windshield needs to be clear, okay? Um, so we talked about that. One other concern I, I wanted to write down here that I wrote down I wanted to talk about. Over here at Jane Muse, they kind of have a unique uh, drop-off situation. Okay, Unlike all the other schools, they don't have a long access road or a certain parking lot. So they share the parking lot with Our Lady of Mercy Church. So if you have students that are going there and you're a parent drop-off, you cannot turn down School Street, okay? You must go down McEllen Street, and you're going to turn in the furthest parking lot entrance, the one closest to the back of the fence. So you're going to go down there, and you can't start lining up until 810. There's no faculty out in the parking lot for school drop-off until 810, okay? So you're going to... Go down there, and then once you unload, you're going to take a left on School Street, another left on Bishop Street, and that's how you're going to exit. And if you have a student there, Jay Muse is going to tell you all about it. Um, but it is a concern, and it's, you know, it can be dangerous for child, you know, drop-off point. So, again, prepare yourself. Prepare your your child for the parent drop-off because, you know, a lot of concerns, people, you know, it takes too long and, you know, they're late for work. Again, folks, do a little, little work before school opens. Make sure your kid is on the right-hand side of the, your vehicle, right? So they're prepared to unload when it's your time to unload, Okay. And that just expedites everything. So, you know, make sure they have their bags ready. They're on the right-hand side of the car. You wait until you pull up. You unseat belt. You get out, you know. And it just makes everything go a lot smoother. There's staff out there to escort your child across through the crosswalk. So the big concern is there's no car traffic down School Street buses only, 
and there'll be a, a crossing guard there as well. So when he tells you to keep going on Babusick Lake Road, you should know that you have to get on McEllen Street and turn down the parking lot. Okay? I think I ranted and raved enough. I'm going to say it one more time. September 6th, school opens for Merrimack. Okay? So please help us help the school district and the town of Merrimack have a nice smooth opening, no incidents, and hassle-free. If you come prepared and you know what is expected of you ahead of time, everything will run smooth. So I hope I'll see everybody out there September 6th. I'll be right out at J. Muse and enjoy the rest of your summer, folks. Thank you.